What's up, everybody? John English here with a, a video. This is going to be something a little bit different. I, I I know I haven't posted for a while. I, I appreciate all the views and you know comments and things like that on the uh, older videos. Uh, I just uh, I was sick for about two months. So so and not what you're thinking, <laughs> not what everybody's going to think it is. That wasn't it at all. So. Uh, I'm kind of slowly coming back around to where I can actually speak for longer than five minutes without coughing and, and whatever else, you know, was associated with this. And, um, so I, I wanted to do something special for a friend of mine. I found out back in October that one of my best friends in the world, uh, that lives in Iowa still. So when I lived in Iowa, I've only been down here in Amarillo for about four and a half years. So I've spent 20 years up there. And I had known Nick for a very long time. We actually started doing uh, internet radio together, um, several iterations of different shows and stuff like that over the years. And so we've known each other for a very long time. I was in his wedding, you know, so uh, there's, we, we were really good friends and he, you know, I found out early on that he was a ghost hunter. So he, he's a, you know, at the time, amateur ghost hunter. And then he, you know, slowly over time became better at it and better at it, better at it. Um, he actually got the chance to be on a Netflix show. So a, uh, you know, a Netflix produced show. The show is called 28 Days Haunted. So go, please go check that out on Netflix. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't watched it yet to go check it out. And it, it's essentially uh, three teams of people in three different locations across the country. It's six episodes, uh, and Nick is part of one of those teams. And I'm so proud of him and so happy for him that all the hard work that he's put in is finally paying off or, you know, at least paid off at least to this point. And I hope I wish him nothing but luck and success in the future. And I really do hope it gets bigger even from here. But uh, I wanted to bring the I interview Nick. Um, I, I I told him I wanted to interview him so because we have kind of a special dynamic together. Uh, we learned it, you know, going doing the show. We got a very similar sense of humor, and we know there's a lot of inside little inside iggies that that, that that we've shared over the years, and we you know only us only we'll laugh about them. You know, so uh, I thought it would be a pretty good interview. And aside from my visual problems that I had. Um, I had to <laughs> using, we had to use, end up having to use zoom cause the Skype thing wasn't working out in Ecamm. I haven't figured out how to do it yet. And this was kind of a last minute thing. So, uh, I was using zoom. I don't have an account with them, a paid account. So it, you know, we're limited as to how many minutes. So I still had the warning pop up in the middle of the screen. I had to do a screen share to even do the interview. And it's so irritating that I forgot to do some stuff and forgot about different things. I forgot it was a screen share. So I'm going to try to cover up as much of that as I can. But uh, Nick certainly deserved way better than that. Um, but it was still a good interview. We had a really good time doing it. And I hope that you enjoy it. All right. So we're going to start the show here. Uh, this is a little bit unconventional for me, for this channel. Uh, and, and just a little bit of a background. Uh, this guy over here yeah we're in the wrong position and i don't know how we got swapped and it's like i don't know how to swap us back so i'm actually the host of this video even though it looks like he is over here this guy no host he's not the host he's he's the guest he's the uh honored guest uh yeah i was invited to be here i'm not the host <laughs> well here what we're gonna do is uh, this is something a little bit different for this channel now obviously this channel started out as a vapor channel and then i switched it over to the photography stuff and i'm still doing the photography stuff i haven't done a video in a very long time because i was sick literally sick for about two months i mean i'm not i'm not even playing i was sick for two months um it not what you're thinking it ain't what you're thinking don't even go there but uh it, it had something to do with the miss uh, let's just say a certain doctor gave me the wrong dosage of a free sample of, of a medication that had previously worked in the right dosage. But then they gave me the wrong dosage and immediately I got sick and I didn't eat hardly anything for a month and a half. I actually lost. I don't know if you remember, Nick, when uh, it's been a while when I was still living up there and I lost all that weight all of a sudden. It was like in in like a month, I lost a ton of weight. Yeah, we almost had to call, you know, the Mayo Clinic to get you 
get you in to see if, you know, maybe you were dying. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turns <clears throat> out I had ketoacidosis. That's why I lost all that weight. I, I was very lucky and I didn't die. But um, you were on keto before it was cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was on the keto thing. So anyway, it it was sort of the same thing, except I wasn't in ketoacidosis. It was the medication had basically killed my appetite. Like I, I would I would eat smoothies every day. That's all I eat. Smoothies. Just smoothies. And and uh I, I started losing weight. Now I'm gaining I've gained most of it back now in like a month's time. I've been like just freaking shoveling shit in my uh, stuff. Oh oops. Stuff in my Oopsie mouth. Daisy. Oopsie. Uh but anyway, so what we're gonna do today is uh, and to justify having this video on my photography channel, we're gonna talk briefly about what equipment these guys use. Now, let me give you an introduction, which is what, probably what I should have done to begin with. Uh, this well, this back up. Yeah, back up. Uh, this is Nick Simons. It is Simons, right? Did I have I ever asked you if that's how you pronounce your name? Yeah, you've you've nailed it every time. That okay, you've okay. Pronounced my name. Okay. Um. So, Nick and I have a storied past. <laughs> it's colorful. It is. It's very colorful. And back in around, was it like 2010, I believe? Somewhere in that 11. Era. 11. 11. Okay, so 2011, yeah. um, I was getting into the world of internet radio, and and I put an ad. I actually put an ad on Craigslist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I put an ad on Craigslist. The first time Nick answered my ad, I ignored it. Because I thought he's just, hey, there's no way this guy's serious. You know, I thought he was, you know, I think he was, I think he even said something that was kind of, I don't know, weird. And I, and I was like, I didn't, you know, I didn't know you, I didn't know what your sense of humor was like. So I just kind of blew him off. And then I waited about a month and I put another Craigslist ad and he answered again. I was like, okay, this guy's serious. There's no <laughs> way he would troll me twice. There's no way. I think the first time I said something about being a Nigerian prince. Yeah, and I wanted to help you with your radio show. Yeah, it may it may have been, and that may be why I was like, er, pump the brakes. And uh, so anyway, Nick and I started doing internet radio. Uh, him under the uh, stage name of Dick Dover, and uh, uh, so we started out on a journey of radio. And of course, I ruined it later on. Uh, we are we were on a really good, you know. I feel like we were on a pretty good roll. We we're you know we had a fan base, and and of course my idiotic. Uh, mental health issues pretty much killed all of that. We um, were broadcasting to tens of fans daily. Tens. To quote Johnny English, Easily. tens of fans. Easily tens. Easily tens. Easily tens. Except Kuala Lumpur, uh, which, by the way, <laughs> still Johnny English show is still the number one downloaded show of all time in Kuala uh, Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur was still, you know, relishing in the, uh, um, <laughs> the, the, what was it? A 2008 release of Johnny English. Yes. Secret spy agent you weren't supposed starring to, Rowan, Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. You weren't <laughs> supposed to tell people that I was going to, I was going to slightly, you know, leave that part out, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, so Johnny English, the movie was huge in Malaysia. I don't know why I don't understand it, but it was, it was gigantic. So here we come. With the Johnny English show. <laughs> Broadcasting at 100 <laughs> watts out of Walcott, <laughs> Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just in Podunk, Iowa, doing this goofy uh, shock jock show. And and here's here's all of a sudden these... I started putting the shows up as a podcast. So I'd put the shows up. I have to cut the music out and all that uh, for copyright, obviously. And then all of a sudden the downloads are just... I mean, we're doing thousands a day, like thousands and thousands a day. Um, Joe Rogan would be impressed with the downloads we were getting out of Malaysia. That's cool, but have you guys ever done DMT? <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, or ayahuasca. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, by the way, my color's not on, right on my face because I had to change over. So, yes, I look ghostly, which is, uh, that might come into play. So anyway, <laughs> give it a minute. Uh, yeah, at, no, actually, maybe on on the recording app, I may look all almost okay. So anyway, uh, if I don't, sorry, I'll try to correct it in post. But anyway, um, so we did this show. We did several different iterations of the show, and it came out. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, maybe it came out right away. I can't remember if you told me right away, but you had started this ghost hunting adventure 
around 2009. Is that about right? That is correct. Okay, so 2009, you met Aaron. Aaron. Okay, so Who's he's the also other man. He's part the, of the show. Yeah, he's also part of the show. The show we're talking about is 28 Days Haunted. We've gone this far, and I haven't mentioned the damn show yet, which is the whole point of doing this interview. That's uh, fine. It'll save you from a scathing review of us talking about the scathing <laughs> reviews of the show. <laughs> I'm a moron, so I haven't done this in forever. You know what I mean? So it, it's like I'm I'm relearning all this all over again. So anyway, uh, and I've said so about 19,000 times. So everybody, drinking game. <sighs> oh wait, hold on! I gotta get my mason jar of water. Ooh. Nice. I haven't drank out of a mason jar in years. But that's all we used to drink out of was mason yeah. jars. I my, my, <laughs> get a whole cabinet full of them. My uh, chief of police stepdad used to mix a, a hearty Jack and Coke in those uh, before duty. So anyway, <laughs> uh, you think I'm lying? Serve and protect. You think I'm lying? <laughs> I'm not lying. So anyway, uh, there's the so again. The show we're talking about now, and and I am so proud of you, Nick. I really am, and I know it's it's again. You know how you know my feelings on the whole ghost hunting thing. Um, yeah, I'm not, and I'm I'm going to try to stay away from that because I am happy for you, and I'm happy that you have found some sort of success with this because I know you've been working your ass off for all these years. Uh, I'm proud of you, you know, and it's uh, it you know it was in the. It, and it's weird because years ago I would have been jealous. Like I would have been super jealous that you got to do something, you know, big like this. And this show, yeah. by the way, this show's on Netflix. I mean, I still I don't even know if I said that before, but you can go watch it right now on Netflix. Twenty eight days haunted. It hit back in October. Um, I've watched all six episodes, and we'll get into the. I'm gonna let Nick talk about the show and and how it's set up and what happened. How did they contact? We're gonna. We're, I'm gonna let Nick take over. I'll shut up and let him take over. But yeah. I, I just want you to know, Nick, that I am seriously proud of you. The first time you told me about it, because you told me about it a little in advance, I had to keep my little mouth shut. My little, nah, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, a little bit of an NDA there. Yeah, know. right. Oh, what I would have had to pay is quite a bit. Yeah, so. yeah, I didn't want to do that. You know, I didn't want you to get in trouble. So I did keep, I actually kept my mouth shut, believe it or not. I didn't say nothing to nobody. I just kept it under my hat and I just kept hoping. I was like, man, I hope this happens for you. I really do. You know, and, and I hope things, you know, you know, whatever happens from it happens from it. Um, at least you reach this point. At least you got to this point. You got further than thousands and thousands and thousands of other people out here doing the ghost hunting thing. Um, but anyway, you know how I feel about it. You know, my uh, concerns about it. I, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's fake because I believe in spiritual I believe in spirits. I believe in demons. I believe that exists because I'm a Bible believer. I'm going to hence the shirt. Uh, I do believe in oh, Jesus. Is that what that says? Yeah, born twice, born again. It's kind of a born, born again born type twice. thing. Wow. Yeah, and um, you know, I I have my feelings on it. I'm not gonna you know pour it out on this show, you know, because this isn't the show. My podcast is for that stuff. But right. uh, uh, I am proud of you. I really am proud of you, and I'm glad you got to experience this. I'm glad you got to do this. Uh, you know, and, and I'm going to shut up here in a second and let you, um, cause I want to know, here's the things I want to know. So I don't have to keep interrupting you for questions. And you know, of course we'll talk back and forth. We'll, we'll banter. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I want to know, like, how did they contact you guys? Uh, did they see you guys on YouTube or something? And, you know, so I would start at the beginning of when you guys were contacted, how do you, you know, cause you and Aaron, have been working together. The third guy in your party on the show, and just briefly, I'll say they had three teams of people in three different locations across the country. Uh, you guys were in Connecticut? Connecticut. Which is weird. Why didn't they send you to Denver? It'd be closer to home. I, I didn't understand that. They they probably wanted to get us as far away from home as they possibly That's, could. I was thinking that. I was like, you know, because I, I was asking that. I was like, man, he would have he been, I mean, it's only a few hours, like 12 hours or 14 hours. And, yep. and, uh, but there's a good chance as a ghost hunter and you've been doing it for enough years that there's a chance you could have run across that house at some point in time. Yeah. You could have read about it or heard about it yeah. somewhere through the grapevine. And they kind of did that with all the people. Um, you know, you had the, the guys from Iowa and Illinois were in Connecticut. You had, um, so there's the North Carolina location and the people that were at the North Carolina location, Jeremy's from Louisiana, uh, Brandy's from 
the UP of Michigan. She's a youper. Look, I got these glowing, glowing rocks. All right. You're going to North Carolina. (laughs) Bring your rocks. Then, uh, you know. uh, Which one now? Now, hold on. So I want to know, as we go through the groups here, the guy that was with you and Aaron, he was from a different location. He's from New York, that area out there. Oh, wow. So they paired you up with another, a guy. See what that doesn't, that doesn't make sense then. That Connecticut's pretty damn close to New York. Yeah, he's kind of the outlier. He had uh, just moved to Connecticut. He was like an emergency uh, addition to the show oh. last minute. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Um, okay, so anyway, and then the next one you were mentioning, Brandy. Oh, yeah, and then uh, Brandy and Jeremy yeah, in uh, North Carolina. And then the Denver team, you know, those guys were from the border of Georgia and Alabama. And uh, the the woman that was with them, Amy, she was from Florida. So, you know, there was probably slim to none chance that they'd ever heard of the Lumber Baron Inn in Denver, Colorado. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Now, Brandy and Jeremy, Jeremy was the demonologist? He's a demonologist, the the Cajun demonologist to be exact. Uh, Him and I are kind of in the works of talking about uh, starting our own little podcast where we just riff raff about. He was throwing the holy water and stuff and, and doing that. And he was yeah. getting, he's the one, he's the, I want to talk about him and this, this, uh, you know, the demon, you know, possession and stuff like that. I do, I do, I could do kind of want to talk about that uh, a little bit uh, later yeah, on. Yeah, we, so, we can definitely get into that. Uh, so anyway, uh, so you got a Brandy, Jeremy, they're a two person team and they were where in Denver? North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. So they were in North Carolina location. And then the other team had four people, correct? Three. Three. I thought yeah, they had all four. All teams were uh, three max. Oh, okay. They had looked into doing four one time way early in the uh, early days of Zoom calls and whatnot, and then it ended up just be three teams of three, and then the North Carolina team was two. They were supposed to be three, but some things fell through, and they just, the hell with it, we'll do two. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I don't know why I was thinking there was four, but anyway, anyway. Uh, I think Amy's the one that I was goo goo gaga over. I was watching her. I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> hello, Amy. <laughs> I'm way too old for you, but you know, I'll be creepy anyway." So, so anyway, I, I'm not gonna say that she may be in the other person that kept me watching, but between you and Amy, I, that's what got me through the series. So, um, <laughs> hey, look, Nick's on the screen. Fast forward. I gotta get. I gotta see what Amy does. Where's next. Amy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, so anyway, so you got these three separate teams in three separate parts of the country in haunted, known haunted locations. Um, some worse than others, different, maybe a little different types of haunting. So, so start at the beginning. How did you get contact? Like how did who contact? Well, I guess I mean you don't have to name names. I don't expect you to break any kind of. I don't want you to get in trouble, but more yeah. or less. But basically, you know, uh, you could say a producer or something. You know, you don't have to say names. But who contacted you, and how did they find you? Um, so Aaron was contacted by another person that had been contacted by the show, and they, uh, they're like, well, we were looking for more people. And, uh, and Aaron ended up getting contacted, and Aaron and I have, you know, years of working together. So naturally, he's like, well, you need another person besides me? Oh, I got just the guy. And Aaron texts me, and then we ended up going and doing a video interview at Preliminary Wow, I'm surprised I was able to say that word. A preliminary video interview with the crew, um, the casting director and whatnot. And it was about, you know, an hour and a half long just talking about who we are, what we do, how we do things, how we approach different situations. And uh, they're like, all right, well, we'll be in touch. And about three months go by. And one day, uh, the wife and I were fishing. We were on vacation up in a fabulous Bellevue, Iowa. <laughs> fishing on the mighty Mississippi and uh, Aaron actually got a hold of me and said, guess what? Netflix wants to talk to us again. I was like, what? It's rare that doing what we do that you get like a second callback. Cause I've probably done 50 different interviews with producers about TV shows. Oh wow. I didn't in, know that. Yeah. From probably 2015 to now the wow. last year. Yeah. Last year. Cause nobody's called me that yet this year, but uh, yeah, they'd, they'd always just call in, you know, Hey, I'm, you know, so-and-so with blah, blah, blah. We're looking to send a group of people to ADAC, Alaska. And it's like, Oh, okay. That'd be cool. 
and then you never hear from him again. And then, so to get this second interview, it was like, oh, I better comb my hair for this one. And we went and did, <laughs> went and did the uh, second interview, and they were pretty much, uh, you know, congratulations, you made it the cut, blah, blah, blah. We'll be in touch when uh, it's time to fly. Oh, okay. Uh, so that was probably June. Then by July, they were like, uh, send me your driver's license number. So we got the tickets for the plane flight, which was in three days. But you had to you had to you had to take time off because you have a job. Yeah, I, last time I, I knew you job. had a job. It's weird that people can be on TV and still have to go to work. But yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, you heard it first, ladies and gentlemen. I had a job, still have a job, still go to work. <laughs> and uh, the HR ladies are always trying to get me to autograph stuff, and I said it's on my W four. Look it up. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's what people don't understand is a lot of these shows, especially when they start out, I mean, most of these people have jobs, regular jobs. They have to take time off, take time away from their families. Um, and you were gone how long? 29 days. 29 <laughs> days. So why didn't they call it 29 days haunted? No, I, mean, I know. I'm just <laughs> But uh, so, no, so- it, was, it was probably about uh, 30 days I was gone. Uh, came right back into work. And then they're like, oh, you're back. Yeah, how'd it go? Can't tell you, <laughs> but yeah. You know what's funny? When you Google the show, the first, I don't know, probably full two pages of search results is 28 days later, the movie. And then finally, yeah. finally at the very bottom, it's like, then you finally, I actually found a picture of you and, and a screenshot, you know, and then finally it's got the 28 days haunted scenes. Yeah, that, that was another cool thing that uh, the, uh, the thumbnail for the show rotates back and forth between like a picture of the lumber baron and a picture of me looking up a staircase. And there's like uh, another picture that they put up there of like the family in North Carolina. So that's pretty cool that I get to be the thumbnail is getting people sending me pictures of me from like Canada, like, Whoa, Oh, Oh, <laughs> Holy crap. You're, you're up here. eh? <laughs> it's like, yeah, the, there I am. I'm the thumbnail. Oh man. <laughs> Well, um, so it gets us into, uh, you, you get there now. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to come off as being cynical or anything like that, but you know, I'm skeptical about some of the stuff and you, what was really nice is when they're there. I love the interviews. Cause it's kind of like, I kind of got into the street outlaw. TV series like two months ago and I binged everything like I, I'm yeah. still binging shows because it's so that, that the one that, with the uh, farm truck yeah farm truck and Asian um, which uh, how they still get away with that in this day and age about calling an Asian man Asian but um, yeah. anyway so I got into this and, and the whole thing behind that show is they're always looking off they're talking but they're talking to somebody that's over here so I grew to love that style, and then that's the kind of the style they do this, is when they're interviewing you guys personally, you're just sitting there and you're kind of looking off that way. You're not looking into the camera. Just slightly. You're just slightly. So is there somebody actually so standing slightly. there? Is there somebody yeah. there? So, yeah, um, when we were doing those interviews, the producer would actually sit in a chair and the camera would be on a tripod, like literally right over his shoulder, and that allowed for you to maintain eye contact with him without like looking directly into the lens the whole time and having that weird, like scanners moment from Wayne's world. Right. Uh, yeah. And I, I always thought that was pretty cool how they did that. And then we even did the same thing when we had to go out to Los Angeles to do some voiceovers and it was set up the exact same way. So they must just do that for all shows, just right over top of the shoulder. So then you have to do voiceovers as well over the video that you're watching us though. So how do, how do they do the voiceovers? I mean, they just play the video. You're watching the video and you're commenting. Yeah. Okay. I kind of figured, I mean, it's almost obvious. I mean, I just, you know, in case somebody yeah. wanted to know, Yep. just, uh, you have to like comment like your feelings or. So coming on, so, that... so going into this and coming out of this and this being over, has it changed you in any way? Has it changed your opinion or any thought processes that you had for all those years while doing uh, the ghost hunting? Because, this, I mean, it, here's the thing. It, it, it's a big production. You've done this before, obviously. You guys have been in houses, and you've done stuff like this before in the past, but there's no camera, uh, you know, right there in your face and filming everything. And then you yeah. watch it back, 
And, and, and of course they add their flair to it, their drama and their, you know, they add all that to it cause they got to keep people watching. I don't care what they say. I mean, you just throw a, a show out there about drag racing, about cars going up and down the street. People aren't going to watch it. And, no. uh, but they have to create drama. So then you have the street outlaws and, and it's like same thing with anything pretty much out there. You have to create some sort of drama. Uh, but as you watch it and so you got to see, you know, cause while you're filming, you only know what's going on in your house. And that's it. That's all you know. So as you watch the show back, you, you got to watch it before it aired, correct? Nope. Oh, I no. I see it the same time the world got to oh, see wow. it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah. so as that's you're why, watching. Yeah, everybody the- was like, let's have a big watch party. Let's have a big watch party. I'm like, oh, let's make sure I don't look <laughs> like a dick first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a watch party at a later date. I you so, guys could all come over. and. <laughs> I so wish I could have been there. I so <laughs> wish I could have been there. I just... I was so hating myself for being in Amarillo at that moment because I was thinking, man, I wish I could have been there with Nick watching it for the first time. That would have been so awesome. Um, I was a little disappointed he didn't squeeze in Zoinks or something like that in, in the show. But, uh, <laughs> there there was a lot of, <laughs> like, whoa! Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of things that got cut. Uh, there was, oh, man, we were, at the time, we were <laughs> obsessed with the theme to Terminator 2, and we were talking about falling down in the basement and just the thumb is all you see just burning <laughs> into the darkness of the basement. And yeah, that got cut. Uh, there was a garden out back that I picked a cucumber out and was chasing people around <laughs> with the cucumber between my legs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Naughty boy. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, as you, but as you looked at it, as you watched it and you see what's going on in the other teams and, and, uh, some of the things going on, do you, do you have a different perspective on ghost hunting now? Like, is it, has it changed in your mind a little bit? Do you have a different, you know, do you look um, at it differently? No, I don't. Uh, ghost hunting has always been about my own personal experience and it should be for everybody that goes out looking for ghosts it's, at the end of the day, it should be what you felt and what you experienced. And then that's your own special thing. And, uh, no, uh, I'm not changing any of my techniques <laughs> and how I do things. Probably the only takeaway I have is all the technology that I can incorporate into the videos that we make for YouTube, the future videos coming up. Cause I definitely learned a lot about uh, just different ways to handle cameras and line up shots and whatnot and how to take more shots than you need. Because hey. when we were doing actual stuff with a camera guy, that was like, all right, let's do that again, but say it different. Let's do that again and say it this way. And it's like, that makes sense because, Oh man, two minutes. <laughs> that makes sense because when we were making YouTube videos back in the day, it was like just straight shot, just one and done. And now that I experience this, I have a little bit more uh, artillery to put in my belt on uh, production. Yeah, because editing sucks. I hate editing videos. That's why I don't do many of them. So anyway, um, okay, so so that we can justify this show being on this channel, let's talk about the cameras. That you yeah, might let's... need if you're a, if you're a an amateur ghost hunter and the audio and the cameras that you would possibly need. Now, do you need a, a camera that has? Uh, I don't know if you can apply that in post or if it's something that has to be built into the cameras. Uh, but the night vision deal is it best yeah, to well, use those? I assume. Yeah, because okay. the night vision is what sells right now, and we can definitely get into that because there is a whole bunch of cameras that were used on this show. And I can't wait to talk about them. Oh, okay. Awesome. And, and we're going to talk, do you want to talk about them? Yeah, we'll talk about them. We got a minute and 37 seconds left. So we might as well just (laughs) ride the wave until we can start over again. (laughs) Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, when we start back up here. And if you don't know what you're talking about, we're using zoom to communicate here because I couldn't get Skype to work right through my recording software. So, and I'm not paying for zoom again. Uh, we only got like 40 minutes to do this and then we'll start it over again. So you'll see it unedited. Well, it'll, it'll be edited, but it'll be Pieced straight through together. Yeah. There'll be no, no, uh, real breaks. So we got, uh, I'm trying to, I'm looking at the clock and it's tick tock ticking. So I'm going to, I'm going to end this. <clears throat> Let's start this back up again. Where were we? Cause you're the guy that remembers shit. I don't remember nothing. We're going to talk about the cameras and the lavalier mics and all oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, to justify this video, uh, we're going to get into the camera gear needed. Now, if you happen to be wanting to join a ghost hunting 
party or posse, as we like to call them, a posse. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a big posse? The the ISP, the Iowa Spiritual Posse. Yes. Iowa Spiritual Posse. It's uh, it was called something else back in the day, but <laughs> but it, it changed. We're we're both brothers of the Lord now, so we don't call it. That's that right. Anymore. It changed. It changed. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, so the Iowa Spiritual Posse. Um, yeah. So let's let's get into this now. Let's start with uh, obviously nobody unless you've got money to start with. It's like you're going to start out with some pretty basic equipment. Um, in yeah, order to absolutely in order to get a decent experience as a ghost hunter, what kind of like, I mean, I assume you kind of know, like I know every, I, I don't know everything, but I know a ton of different cameras for what I do, you know, for what mm -hmm. I do personally, I could I could rattle stuff off all night. So in your world uh, with the ghost hunting, uh, let's get into, if you're just starting out, let's say you're on a somewhat decent budget let's say let's say i don't know could you get away with a couple thousand could you get away with less yeah you can get away with uh definitely less you you don't have to be at like the level that i'm at where you're looking at a couple thousand you know a canon xa50 a gopro hero 8 a uh task cam lavalier mic on board system for my belt i mean there's a shotgun mic on my camera that's you know <laughs> we're already into the three thousands based off of just the camera alone. I mean, the camera was like 25, I think it was, or was it 28 either way? Uh, but yeah, just starting out, you, there's tons of ghost places online that will sell you cheap night vision cameras. You don't have to take the plunge into B and H video.com. <laughs> just click, yeah. click, 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 and fill my cart. Whoa. I don't have that kind of money. Um, but yeah, like ghoststop.com, they have, fairly inexpensive cameras that will have night vision and that will be more than what you need to go out and film your experience and have a wonderful time. I'm very familiar with B and H, um, and, yeah, me and, too. and, and Adorama and yeah. several others across the country. But, um, so, so your camera, the cameras that you guys use have built in night vision. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. The, uh, the XA 50 has an onboard, um, IR lens. You just have to go into the screen and click on the IR light and click on the, uh, uh, what was it? You can either choose green or black or green or black and white. And I always like black and white. I think it looks pretty nice when you, you know, go into night vision and it's a crisp black and white. I mean, the, uh, people show up better, like actual flashy right, right. people seem to show up better on that nice black and white, IR night vision over so when, the, the the classic green night vision. So I've noticed there's a lot. I've I bought some used gear too, and uh, some of the used camera stores. Um, I've seen cameras that said uh, IR something. It's like they were they. You have to do something to change the cameras to, to with through infrared. Um, mm -hmm. Is that what they're talking about? Is is there a good chance that bro, those cameras are probably used? you know, in such activities. I mean, why else would you need an IR camera unless you're using it as a, I don't know, a security camera or something, uh, you know, at night. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the XA 50. Why does it come with a night shot like that? Yeah. You know, that big expensive, I mean, people use that to like video weddings and shit and I'm running around dusty old buildings with it. I actually take, <laughs> Take, when I'm when I'm using it and I'm running around, I don't have any more hands to hold a flashlight, so I'll just take the viewfinder and flip it forward and use that as my light to be able to see and walk through these hallways. And you know, when I'm actually in a room like filming, I'll flip the viewfinder back and actually line up the shot and make it look pretty. But if I'm just like cutting down a hallway, yeah, that's my flashlight, the viewfinder on. The <laughs> so I'm probably gonna break those cables from flipping it forward, flipping it back, forward, back. So just so you people know, don't take your $6,500 Sony A1 or your $5,500 Nikon Z9 and go have the IR, have it IR enabled or whatever, How whatever they do to the sensor. It's something they do and it's permanent and it doesn't go back. So once you do yeah. it, I think it's done. It's like you have, you're stuck with it. So <laughs> don't be taking your yeah. four, five, six thousand dollars cameras and have it. Oh, I want this. I want to take this ghost hunting. No, don't do it. Just don't. Um, no, there's a uh, um, my buddy Zeke 
who I shot a couple of videos with for YouTube, he actually had a, a cinematic, uh, I couldn't give you the actual name of it, but it was like retailed at like $8,000. It was yeah. one of those, it was like a box and then a lens yep. come off the box, but it was definitely a cinematic camera. Yep. And uh, he used that for all of his fancy shots. He did not use that in dusty old buildings at all, yeah. <laughs> especially at night. I mean, you get some kick-ass B-roll with that and then put it away. Yeah, I, I uh, cinema cameras would probably be a good choice. And they and they make different levels. You know, Canon's got two or three of them that are, you know, fairly decent. Sony's got... Mm -hmm. Sony actually just came out with an FX30, which is... Uh, the APS-C version of their FX3. The FX3, I believe, is the cheapest cinema camera they have, uh, but it's full frame, and then uh, that would probably be a good start, but it's I, th I can't remember what the price is on them. I think they're probably $2,500, $3,000. Um, Basically, go rent one if you want one for a couple yeah, days. Yeah, Lens Rentals. I use Lens, lens Rentals. They, do, they don't sponsor this at all. They're not sponsoring this video, mm -hmm. but LensRentals.com, uh, they rent everything. They have, you name it, Cinema cameras, regular cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless, you name it, lenses out the yin yang. Um, rent first. Make sure you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna put the time and effort in, you know, that's needed to, to do this. And make sure you're gonna stick with it because I mean, look this guy or this guy. Don't look at this guy. There's <laughs> nobody there. there. Look at this yeah, guy. Look, look, look at that shelf full of stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, look at my my well, they can't see it. You can see it, but they can't see it. I've got it. Mm. actually cut out oh no well i don't know maybe not they might be able to see it that's gonna oh, suck hell. you can see my filthy dresser over there with my crap all over it Fooey. i made my bed uh, <laughs> i made hey, my bed look, though that looks warm and inviting oh it is it, and it and mm. it's and even though alabama <laughs> is out of the pretty much out of the picture for championship this year i still rock their blankets i'm still watching the bama blanket. yeah not to time stamp the video but that game last night <laughs> I was watching that one. And I was like, "Fool!" Uh, I thought about texting you, but then it went away. Yeah, <laughs> you know I, I, I'm gonna leave him alone. I didn't. Wa <laughs> I didn't watch the game, and and uh, I, I've only really watched part of one game this season. I just don't get into it. Is I haven't. I have, dude. Listen to me. I haven't watched live television in any way, shape, or form. Live cable TV, uh, live anything. No newscasts, local newscasts, or nothing for. I've been down here a little over four and a half years. Add yeah. another year at least onto that. So five and a half years at least I haven't watched live TV. Nothing at any. I watch everything on demand. Everything is on demand for me. Anything I watch is on demand. So um, I, I just, I don't know. So so with the games, of course, they're copyrighted. And you can only, if you, if you want to watch them through CBS.com or anything anymore, you have to have some kind of subscription. And yeah. so I'll get on and I'll watch the, the animated deal where it just basically shows the lines going down the field, you know, and then, uh, yeah, you can do that right off the Google page. Yeah. Yeah. So I just do that now. I'll do like, yeah, Alabama, the little line. I don't get to see the players, but <laughs> oh, well, yeah. they're doing it. They're doing it. Oh, I bet Nick Saban's so happy. Right now. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah. So. So, so cameras, um, pretty much you can start out with something relatively inexpensive. You don't have to go crazy with, with oh. a camera. Um, uh, you visit the wonderful ghoststop.com website, and there is a whole range of different cameras on there from actual video cameras to DSLR cameras that are already modified for night vision, but they're, they're cheap. They're, you know, they're, they're a lot cheaper than, you know, getting on B and H and let me get that XA 50 or they're probably at the 60 or 90 now, I think, aren't they? Um, either way, uh, Canon and Sony, they have pretty much the same yeah. camera. I mean, they're on the show. You actually see us holding a camera that has a backpack attached to it. That was a, a wireless transmitter. So we could transmit what we were filming to the uh, production trailer that was outside live. That was kind of cool. So I have to ask though, too, where you know you've got the scene where the two guys are standing in the room with all the TVs, and they're they're yeah. supposedly watching everybody in real time. Were they actually watching everybody in real time? The, they were watching us at a later date, I believe. Okay, that's what I figured. Uh, that's kind of what, I mean. They have to do it for the show because it looks cool and it's like a cool event. Like, oh, these two guys are just standing in this room watching a live feed from these uh, other teams. 
Um, so I kind of figured that, but you know, I, I, I did get to peek inside of the, one of the production trailers. I was walking over to talk to one of the producers one day, which again, the producer was the only person like we could talk to, like you'd see production assistants and stuff, which they went and got groceries and stuff for us. Whenever we wrote our grocery list down, they'd take it and they'd go, but they wouldn't say anything. So I'd be standing outside in the morning with my cup of coffee and they'd be walking by and I'm, I'm from Iowa. So I'm Iowa nice. I'd be like, I do and they just look straight at the ground and keep walking. It. <laughs> well, the hell with you too. Well, they must be <laughs> from California. Yeah, these darn darn college kids keep coming up here and killing themselves. <laughs> it's Tucker and Dale versus Evil. If you guys haven't seen it yet, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Yeah, I got it's, I got to peek inside of the production trailer one day, and I'm like, "Can I look at it all the way?" And he goes, "No," <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> What I was able to see was all the different, each camera that was set up inside of her house, because not only was the camera that we had with the backpacks that you can see, yeah, but there was also static cameras on like basement jacks, pretty much just extendable poles right. mounted to the floor and the ceiling. And then they had cameras mounted on them that could move 360 degrees uh, left and right. And then they had 180 degrees up and down. I think the nerd terminology is the X and Y axis. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. 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 I've heard of that before, uh, <laughs> but though there was like uh 15 of those mounted all throughout the house, as well as three individual static cams mounted in our rooms so they could watch us sleep at night. Yeah, that's not perverted at all. So, um, <laughs> no, uh, anyway, would. I wouldn't be able to, I don't honestly do. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could sit knowing that there's a camera in my room. I wouldn't be able to sleep because it's like, even though I know I'm not doing anything and I know, you know, keep my hands off myself, <laughs> you know, and, and don't, don't hit your balls. <laughs> yeah. And don't do something <laughs> stupid. Don't get up, you know, you know, buck naked and, and walk across the room. I, I know not to do that, but for just knowing that somebody is some creepy dude is sitting in a van watching me sleep. It makes me so that just creeps me out, dude. You would have been able to sleep because the night shift was this uh, blonde woman that was out in the trailer just because they had a night shift overnight. So like they were like, their job was to record anything. Like if we got up and like threw up or something, they'd record the timestamp and save that video for the edit. Okay. Well, that probably would have made it worse for me, though. A blonde woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she'd uh, she'd show up to set every day and walk through the grass wearing like heels and stuff, and I would just be sitting there watching her. Like, is she gonna fall today? <laughs> yeah, you know that heel's gonna plan. Is this gonna go all the is way she, in one day? Is she gonna stick it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so so we kind of have an idea. So we justified the video to be on the channel. We talked about camera gear. It, it's. It's special, but it's not special. It's not like it's, you know, you don't need $10,000 cameras. You can get away with uh, lower cost cameras. You can have them IR. I forget what the process is called, so forgive me, but I know they changed the sensor over to it only records infrared. And then you can choose, like Nick said, you can choose whether you get the green or the white, the black and white. And once it's set, it's permanent. You can't flip it back like you can't send you know have somebody go oh well i want this to be a regular camera sensor again they can't do that yeah. it's like it's done i think it's that done. actually comes down to they actually like pull the mirror or whatever out of the yeah. lens and flip that mirror around and it's yeah just buy yourself a camera that can flip and do both yeah i don't even know if a mirrorless camera can even have that done like i don't even know if it's possible they maybe electronically through the through the board or something maybe they can change it through the electronic system, through the uh, processor. Mm -hmm. But most of your cameras that I've seen like that are like DSLRs. They're older DSLRs um, where they, like you said, they're they're all just infrared, changed over to infrared. And I've seen them yeah. all over. You can get them on uh, KEH or MPB or, or Adorama cells use gear. You just have to look through them and, it, and it'll tag. It'll say there in the, you know, IR, yeah, IR, mm -hmm. whatever, activated or something like that. And yeah, a lot of times uh, they're cheaper than a regular camera because they're only good for one thing, you know. That's when we were, we were picking out our cameras. Uh, this is off the show. When we were picking out the cameras to shoot our documentaries and stuff that we put up on YouTube, we had, that's why I went with the XA50 because it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of cameras. Um, you know, you can shoot 4K daytime shots and get some awesome b-roll and then you can flip it over and run the ir with it and have night vision shots and it's fairly light and nice it's it's got the uh the onboard 
connection set up to have the shotgun mic or you can have an actual is it square also style. is it the square cinema style or just no a, no no the uh xa50 is about you know so it's like a camcorder long. it's got that hand it's got the handle on top it's yeah, like it's a camcorder, actual camcorder. Sort of. yeah, yeah yeah okay it's I an actual you. camcorder it you. was actually down between getting one of those or getting a DL, dslr and the only thing that i didn't like about the dslr was you only had 30 minutes of record time on it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and if you're, I, yeah, you know, that's a problem. <laughs> coming into it, saying, you know, with the mindset of we're going to make videos for YouTube, you you kind of need a little more than thirty minutes of record time. <laughs> yeah, well, and thank goodness they finally got rid of that. You know, the only reason that was in- instituted, right, was was over in Europe or somewhere. Uh, they had to have that at a thirty minute limit. A lot of times, twenty nine, actually twenty nine point. Nine 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 uh, was because if they went over thirty minutes, they had to designate it as a uh, film camera or a cinema camera, which means the taxes would change and the taxes would be much higher. So if they mm. if they left it at thirty minutes or below, then they could still sell it as a photo camera, and the taxes were less, and there it was it was a whole different process, and that's the only reason. But Kinda here's like the when thing: they made these with a phone charger and a flashlight. Yeah, out. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're talking vape gear now, folks. Uh, yeah, I'm going to satisfy everybody. Gears. I'm yeah. satisfying everybody on my channel today, even though there's still some vape people that are still subscribed. So uh, there, there yeah. is your vape talk and me vaping through this entire video. Yeah, um, both of us vaping through this entire video. Yeah. And then we're going to tap on Jesus here in a little bit. I yeah. found out last <laughs> night I had to get ordained online to marry the neighbor's kids. So I was happy I'm to hear that. Officially be Father Nick Simons. I, I was kind of happy to hear hear. Uh, and this has been when was this? This is a while back. I think I was down here though. But I heard I I saw you being interviewed or something, and you mentioned something about being uh, associating with Christianity. And, and you never talked to me about that. I mean, we talked about some of the stuff, but we never got in depth and, and we're not going to get in depth in this, this video. So don't you guys just freaking don't freak out. Uh, but I was actually kind of happy to hear you say that I was surprised and I was happy because most people, I mean, people will say I'm spiritual. People will say whatever. And uh, you kind of, put yourself in that box. And I was actually kind of happy that you did put yourself in that box. You know, uh, just the same way I was happy to hear you say on this show on 28 days haunted, that you're a skeptic, that you are a ghost hunter and you're, you investigate, but you're also skeptical and you investigate because you're skeptical. That was nice to hear. That was a breath of fresh air. Um, you know, because you need skeptics doing this stuff. You can't have people that are all in, just like there's some of the guys on there or some of the people on the show claim to be uh, seers or, you know, have, have this ability to communicate, you know, mm-hmm. that, that's where I get, that's where I get kind of, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. Cause these guys are telling you that stuff that's going on and you guys can't see it. Nobody else can see it, but they're like, I'm having a conversation with them right now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that he's here. I feel a child present. You felt a child present at the last 12 stops. We made. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the odds of you feeling a presence at any given time in any of these haunted places. You figure that the billions of people that have died in the last 2000 years. Uh, yeah, you're probably going to feel a presence of a child or whatever, you know. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not going to sit here and try to I'm not going to bash them and I'm not going to get into this thing where I, I just absolutely right. don't believe uh, the part about the ghost hunting. And, and the thing about it is uh, me being a believer in the Bible. Uh, it says to leave these things alone. It's, it says to leave these entities alone. And I think part of the reason why is what Jeremy experienced. Um, that was a little... Now, you know, you can sit and watch that with disbelief if you want to. Um, mm-hmm. Because I did. I was skeptical. And, and I was thinking, but I started... Th- you know, it was hitting me. I was like... I remember you telling me a long time ago uh, when you were telling me about the ghost hunting stuff... That you could bring stuff home. You like something could just ride, jump on your back and ride home with you. And you don't know mm-hmm. what it is. You know, you yep. have no clue. Yep. Even going out doing this stuff. Like if I were to get my gear out right now and fire it up, I wouldn't know who I was talking to. We'd start getting responses, but I wouldn't, you know, they, 
there's no law that says you have to identify yourself straightforward with these paranormal investigators as, you know, yes, I am grandma coming back to visit you. You know, it's, it, it, you got to start asking have, for an ID too. I need an, yeah, I need to see an ID, it, please. Yeah. There, <laughs> a lot of the times you could be dealing with dark energies and stuff like that. And you just got to be careful. And, and, uh, Jeremy's uh, case, uh, the way he was acting on the show is part of demonology is when you come in contact with a dark entity, dark entity like that. I mean, you have to show authority over those energies over those dark entities over dark energies whatever and when you see him on the show yelling and screaming and throwing his shirt off and screaming lines out of the bible that's not because he's a maniac and he's acting that's actually his training coming in he's been you know been training in demonology for 10 years and now he offers online courses to it to people online that was his training kicking in like we're going to war with this. And he even said that I'm going into war and he's not a maniac screaming into the darkness. He's actually sensing that there's something dark in that location and he's showing authority over it and able to beat that darkness out of the building. And he's just been getting ripped to shreds for it because they didn't allow him to explain that on the show. You know, it's funny you mentioned war. Um, and it is, you know, there's, there's always a spiritual war going on. Um, the thing that I was thinking that was going through my mind is, and, and maybe I've seen too many movies, you know, when they're, they're, you know, ghostbusters and stuff, but you would think at some, you know, you're going into a place like this, is, okay, this is like Jeremy's going in and there's this, you think you're going in for this one person. Then you've come to find out he was actually possessed by this other demon or whatever that was much greater in the you know in the dark realm than you know he's mm -hmm. like a I don't know he's 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 a what do they call it a, a boss in a video game you know it is like he yeah, was actually the, the final boss of ghosts right 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 and, and it's like the guy did kill his family you know they come to find out the guy killed his family and so you're thinking that this is the guy because you've got the 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 women or whatever the children children and and the other people that he killed um, reaching out to you guys or reaching out to Jeremy and, and, you know, to, to, to I guess, communicate. Brandy. Yeah. And reaching and, out for help. And I think most of you guys kind of go in, you're like, how do we release these, these spirits to go wherever they need to go? Cause they're stuck in, in our dimension and they need to be in their dimension. They need to be gone. Uh, but then you run across this They're Oh, well it's not, yeah, he was possessed and he or Yeah. He's, he did kill his family, but it's because he actually had been possessed whatever the weeks before that. Um, and nobody had taken the time to see, you know, talk to people about his behavior before he killed his family, you know, and they, but of course back then they didn't know they, they had no clue. You guys like, we all yeah. kind of know now, but they didn't know. It's 2022. We still barely talk to men about how you feeling. What's your, what's right, on your yeah. mind? You know, what yeah, are you going yeah. through? I mean, so it was, I can imagine it was even worse in 1929 and shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth, see. Just man up, see. They didn't just walk up and hug him. And like, you need a hug. Yeah. You need a hug. You get you slugged right down? in the. You get slugged right in the kisser. Yeah, if you, you went up you and want, hugged a man. Hey Charlie, you want to talk about it? Are you feeling okay? <laughs> no, see, I'm I'm okay. See. Yeah, I'll be fine. See, the Great Depression's about to start. See, <laughs> where's my daughter's at? See, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, it's really, it, but it is interesting, and it, and it is a spiritual warfare. Uh, even if you if you believe in the Bible, it's all over the Bible. Spiritual warfare. It, it's it, I've encountered it on a different level. Not fighting. I mean, there might be a couple of times. Uh, I got a couple of stories I need to talk to you about one of these days. But um, you know, I, I've I've experienced a little bit. Uh, but my spiritual battle is more of along the lines of being a sinner and continuing to sin. And there's th things that I know I don't have to do, but I'd still do them. And it's, it's that, it's that nagging and that freaking demon, whatever, whatever's riding your, your ass and, and having you, you know, making you do these things. And we, as human beings just don't have, you know, we don't have the willpower, most of us to stop doing this stuff, you know? So that's the whole point between God and Jesus and all that is, is he takes all that, you know, on himself. Uh, but, but anyway, um, so, 
Yeah, I guess we ended up getting into the. Uh, uh, we did slide a little Jesus in there, didn't yeah. we? Um, that's all okay. Hey, all the channels. Hey, that's okay. Um, your experience. Um, if you haven't watched the show, the whole point of the twenty eight days is they feel uh, who was the who was the ones that created this whole twenty eight day theory. What was their names again? You remember? That would be Ed and Lorraine Warren came up with the theory of twenty eight days. That. Explain that. Explain that. Yeah. It takes 28 days to get fully like engulfed by haunting and allow the veil to thin enough to allow the the people in that situation to experience the full power of a haunting. So, and it makes sense. I mean, it, it's kind of the same thing as just meeting people. You walk into a party and you meet somebody for the first time. You don't know them. You know, right. you don't know what they're about. They could, you know, they could do whatever and you you'd have no clue what's coming uh it's kind of the same thing you guys go ghost hunting for one night two nights maybe you might stay for the weekend yeah one night couple hours sometimes yeah a couple hours i mean in, get a couple recordings and go out and then you base a whole 45 minute you know youtube video on what you were able to find in five hours <clears throat> so it makes sense that this theory it, the theory makes sense it makes total sense so it's, you spend enough time uh, you let, you know, whatever this is, whatever you want to believe it is, uh, get used to you being there. And, you know, the good, the, the good guys knowing that you're not there to harm them and the bad guys are knowing, oh, well, you know, we're going to start fighting here pretty soon, uh, gearing up for battle. And, and it's like, it, it makes total sense. So, uh, so that's the premise behind the whole show. 28 days. It takes 28 days to pierce the veil of, of, you know, this, this interdimensional thing. Uh, yeah, between I, our world and theirs, yeah. and you definitely see you see some uh, evidence of piercing the veil of the twenty eight day cycle working, and then you also see some evidence of <laughs> uh, all the teams fighting with each other. I mean, when I graduated <laughs> high school and I was talking about moving out, my dad said, "Don't you ever, ever, ever rent or <laughs> become roommates with your buddies." And it's highlighted pretty well on the show. I mean, by day like 10, we were about sick of each other and we still had another 18 days to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I've experienced that as well. It's the same thing as don't go into business with family. There's a lot of different things yeah. that we all pretty much ignored as kids. And we found out the hard way that uh, maybe the old people weren't wrong after all. Uh, so building up on that, we'll end it uh, in this, this, this conversation uh, on this. You're towards the end, you're getting close to the 28 days and you had a little, little argument amongst your, your peers in, in the house. Um, made one of them cry, made Aaron cry, which, you know, I mean, uh, what, what is your, I don't, I don't, God, I don't, I, I want to make sure I'm not ask this the right way, but uh, <laughs> how much do you, how much do you attach to the whole, uh, the spiritual or the spirits or demons or whatever's in the house causing that? Or was it more along the lines of you guys, just like you said, you guys are getting sick of looking at each other and, or, and see, I know, you know, you already said you're a skeptic. You already said you're partly skeptical. So immediately, I'm thinking, I'm thinking exactly the way Nick is thinking. And especially about the guy from New York where he's walking in. So-and-so is saying this and saying that, and they're saying this and you're, and I'm, I'd be standing there like, really, is, is he really saying that? And, and I would be immediately thrown out of the house, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where'd Johnny go? Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick is more, he's, you know, even when we were doing the show way back in the day, Nick was the nice guy. Everybody loved Nick. Everybody hated me, uh, because I was a dick. And that's, I'm sorry. I, that's one of my major sins is I'm a dick at times. Uh, I can be there anymore. Now that he's got the brother on his <laughs> mother, of the Lord, not with Jesus on my side. No, I'm still a sinner. I am still a sinner. Yeah. I'm still at times I lose control and I'm an idiot, but that's my, that's my battle. You know, that's my spiritual battle. So, uh, I don't mean it a lot of times. I'm actually a really nice guy when, when the chips are down, but, um, yeah. I don't. I don't like to toot that horn, but uh, but I love you. You know, I love you, and I'm proud of you. Love you too, brother. Um, but how much of that would you attest to 
one or the other spiritual side of it versus we're just tired of seeing each other. And I just want to go home and this stuff is starting to look kind of weird. It's not looking right. You know, it, you know, you and Aaron, I mean, you may, Aaron crying was a little bit of a curveball. that kind of, I, I was like, why yeah. is he crying? Um, it wasn't even that bad of a fight, but uh, I know that's yeah. what I'm saying. It, is it was, was it maybe in his case, the emotions were caused by this entity um, in the or fr- is 10 years of Rome roaming around with me and me <laughs> making fun of him like that for 10 years straight. <laughs> and, and because I get, up. I get you, I get yeah. you, I get your sense of humor and me and you have uh, thrown verbal jabs back at each other. And, and it's like, we can say things to each other and not get mad at each other because yeah. we know. And Aaron has always, I, I never got to know Aaron, which is weird that you guys met each other first and I never really got to know the guy. Uh, so I don't know him. I, I, I'm not going to speak about his emotional. Yeah. You got to see him for like four minutes at the wedding. Yeah. Or, yeah, exactly. You know? And uh, um, so I don't know. I man. think it was, you know, just a combination of the environment as well as, you know, being in a haunting like that. Um, everything just kind of built up and came to a head as the month wore on and, uh, you know, no phones, no internet, no way to call home. Um, Aaron had no way to call home. Sean was, you know, trying, you know, always thinking about his dad and wanting to call home to his dad. And when you don't have that kind of access to everyday essentials that you're used to, I mean, it, it kind of starts picking at you a little bit and having to go out and then ghost hunt every night. I mean, it gets old real quick. I mean, by like day eight, we were like, well, what are we going to do tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were all out of ideas at that point and we still had, you know, 20 more days to do this, but <laughs> I think all of that just kind of swirled together and made for the, the inner, inner, inner human fighting. You could call it, um, uh, yeah, a lot of tension and you just got to figure out how to deal with it. If there's not a lot going on, I can see, you know, cause we're all used to using electronic devices every day. And there's times that, um, if you yank everything out of our hands and put us in a remote location, um, even you could just put somebody by themselves and you're going to lose your mind because, because uh, every day, First thing I do, which is stupid, is I'll wake up early to have to use the bathroom and I'll grab my stupid phone and start looking at it. And then I'm awake and I can't go back to sleep. Um, and I know not to do this every day, but who does it every day? I do. Uh, same thing with anything to do with my photography, uh, getting into re-editing photos and stuff like that. I've been re-editing a bunch of old photos with newer technology and I got I got into it and I can't stop, you know, and, and, and because I know I won't be able to be, I won't be happy if I don't, if I don't do it, I'm not going to be happy. So we have all of these things every day. And then you, you just get thrown into a place and there's none of that. So you have to rely on each other. Like back in the olden times when they didn't yeah. have TVs and phones, Damn it, I actually have to talk to people. Yeah. We Son actually have boy. to interact this sucks. Yeah, I mean, it, it it really makes you think of, you know, you're not going to see like what we've seen growing up, you know, growing up in the, for me, it was the nineties, Johnny, it was, you know, the eighties and the nineties, you know, you, you always saw old guys just relaxing outside, just watching traffic. Yep. And but I, and those honestly, days are long gone. <laughs> I understand why gonna, they're doing it now, by uh, the way. <laughs> yeah. But, but just thinking about that now, like the way everybody's become so dependent on, electronics and entertainment and you know like tiktok and stuff like that it's 10 seconds of entertainment and you can get sucked into it for three hours straight 20 years from now you're not going to see old guys just sitting outside watching traffic Mm -hmm. everybody's just going to be sitting inside playing on their phones playing on their ipads or whatnot and probably at that point we'll be somehow interlaced with AI and there won't be anybody at all it'll, or it'll just be conscious, you know, consciousness in yeah. a computer. If Elon Musk has his way, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, well, thank you, Nick. I really do appreciate you coming on here and thank all of you who watch this. Thanks for you know, <laughs> watching the video. Uh, it's different. And you know, if you want, Hey, if you want more stuff like this, uh, shoot me a comment down below. And, uh, you know, I'll maybe try to, we did talk about cameras. Yes, we did talk about cameras. 
And for the vapors, we vaped, and uh, he showed a mod for briefly a few seconds. So uh, we yeah. covered yeah. all the bases. Yeah. And Jesus, and more importantly, we talked about Jesus, and that that's that's the we covered everything. And one that more Johnny's involved in. <laughs> one more, sh- one more. I almost said a swear word. One more hot <laughs> tip that I learned on the show: if you're attaching a lavalier mic to your shirt. Like for me, I always had a flannel on, so we'd always have it stuck inside the flap. Right. Yeah. They use toupee tape. I didn't know that. Like oh. before that, I was always like clipping it on and stuff like that. No, yeah. you just get a little rubber piece that goes around the microphone and put toupee tape on both sides and stick it in there. I'm like, wow. Why didn't I think of that? Wow. That, yeah. And well, that's hel- helpful for my what I do because then you're doing YouTube videos or whatever and you're out, you know, doing them out and. Uh, that's yeah. actually that's actually really good. Uh, really good. See, now you got advice. You got advice. You got. We talked about cameras and advice. Tech tech tips. My goodness, this is an outstanding video. This is full of information. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, I really do thank you, Nick, and I'm proud of you. Uh, I love you. You're still like a brother to me, even though we're a thousand miles apart. Um, hopefully, I get up there. Um, it's just this year kind of sucks. And this year's yeah. had some really last bad couple things. years have been a doozy. I mean, uh, appreciate the kind words. Love you too. Miss I you. always do. I think uh, about you guys every day, and and it's like uh, there never a day goes by that I don't think about my best friend Nick because you are probably truly my best friend. Um, oh God, I hope I don't choke up. Am I about to choke up? <laughs> about to be. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Aaron, I'm going to be crying for a different reason. I'm crying because I yeah. love you. He's crying because you pissed him off. Because I upset him. He's upset he's spaghetti. You're mean. You guys hug it out. Everything's cool. Yeah, everything's fine. We okay. hugged it out like five seconds after that happened. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so everybody go out and watch 28 Days Haunted on Netflix right now. I don't know how long it's going to be streaming. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I hope to see you doing more stuff. Hopefully this is just a, kind of a catalyst into something bigger. Uh, What's the YouTube channel, by the way? You mentioned YouTube. we got to hurry up. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash ghost YouTube.com forward slash afterlife sessions. Check it out. I'll put the links in the description. So thank you for watching. Thank you, Nick. And we will see you guys later at another date at some point. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.